Alright guys, so I'm now on the way to Berlin to Martin from TechAltar and we are building a computer and the whole car is full with PC parts and I'm so super excited and yeah, I'll just have to drive from Vienna for 7 hours, which will be kind of boring, but let's go. Alright guys, so I finally arrived at Martin's home and we have almost all the components. There is something missing, so it's still like a ghetto build, but with some pretty cool components. And today we're building two different rigs, so both are for video editing, but Martin's PC will look slightly different, a bit more stylish. My PC will probably have some more lights and all that fancy stuff. But you can find um, his video on his channel, the link is down below and in the info card up there. And if you want to see my rig, then just stay tuned and now let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, after arriving at Martin's flat, we could start to build our dream systems, or almost dream systems. My build consists out of a monster CPU, the Ryzen 7 1800X on a MSI X360 motherboard a Be Quiet Silent Loop 280 water cooler, 16GB of DDR4 RAM from the Hypex Kingston series, two MSI GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4GB OC GPUs, a 240GB Kingston Hypex SSD, then an 8TB WD RED drive and a Be Quiet Straight Power 10 600W PSU. All that in a beautiful looking case from BitPhoenix. And you can find all the links down below in the description. But now, let's get started. I know the build does not make sense, because I'm combining a super high-end CPU like the Ryzen 7 with a budget GPU bundle. But there are some things I want to cover in the next videos. And this is, why does Nvidia does not support SLI below the 1060 series? And how does overclocking affect the performance and power consumption of CPU and GPU? And also, will the GPU's bottleneck. So stay tuned for some more videos on the build. In the year 2017, motherboards are not just about performance and features anymore. Aesthetics have become very important. I personally think that the MSI X360 X-Power Gaming Titanium surely is one of the nicest motherboards available, except of the name. The motherboard looks absolutely nice, but it's not the cheapest board on the market. It comes with some fancy features like a metal colored coating, extra overclocking features, including an overclocking button, which we'll cover in the next videos. There's also DDR4, AX and P functions and not one, but two M.2 slots. The board supports two-way SLI and Crossfire X configs split between its main PCI Express X16 slots. The two 1050 Ti which I'm using officially do not support SLI, but DirectX 12 supports multi-GPU and will have an in-depth look on what you can do with multiple GPUs in one of our next videos, including Bitcoin mining. I just had one huge problem. When we wanted to mount the CPU cooler, we noticed that I forgot to order the AM4 kit for the Be Quiet Silent Loop. This is basically a different mounting plate for the new socket. And also you will need some washers to get an adequate pressure on the cooler, because the length of the screws is a bit different. But it's very easy to do and you can easily mount a Be Quiet Silent Loop on any AM4 build with the new mounting kit. I really wanted to use that water cooling system because the 280 Silent Loop is huge and provides great cooling. Now I wanted to get this build done with Martin since months, so I said let's do it. It doesn't matter if it looks like a ghetto build, it just needs to work for a few weeks until my new kit arrives. So nothing what a drill couldn't fix, right? Now after a couple of beers we had the solution. 
Let's drill bigger holes and let's use two of the original holes and just use bigger washers on the other screws. Now after applying thermal paste I was already nervous, but well the cooler fits perfectly nice and even with not 100% even pressure it shows great cooling results. So after that huge cooler was installed on my little baby, the Ryzen 1800X, I could install the 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM from Kingston, which come in a nice design. For some tests 16 gigs is enough, but doubling it to 32 GB is not a bad idea, especially for video editing. I mounted all that in my Bit Phoenix case. The huge radiator at the top, supported by two intake and one outtake LED fans. BitPhoenix is a company that makes them affordable and good looking cases, cables and RGB case mods. Their fans are not the quietest ones, but they look great. And also, BitPhoenix has some nice LED strips which you can connect to your motherboard or directly to your power supply by using their kit. As always, you can't have enough LED lights, but also you can't have enough storage. Now that's why we used a 8TB Western Digital Red Drive. It's crazy how much storage you can already get on a single drive. I actually wanted to get a WD Black for faster speeds, but also the Red Series NAS drives are fast enough and reliable. I personally use 4 6TB WD drives in my NAS and so far they work fine. Probably I will make a burst coin mining tutorial in the future because I got like 60TB of free space at home. As fast storage for the OS, we are using the Kingston Hypex drives, which are pretty good, but they are not as fast as M.2 drives. Now pretty soon I will get myself a Samsung Evo M.2 drive, which is incredibly fast and gives me a huge boost for video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, so stay tuned for some benchmarks. Now to power all that, we are using a Be Quiet Straight Power 10 600W PSU. I've been using Be Quiet PSUs in almost all my previous builds. Now they are quiet, have good voltage regulation, good efficiency and also modular cable management. Now I was really impressed by the low power consumption of the 1050 Ti's from MSI. They only have a TDP of around 75 watts and don't even need external power on them, which also makes the internals of the case look cleaner without the 6 pin cables going to the GPUs. So overall, the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4G OC delivers on all the promises of the GTX 1050 Ti lineup. Small, quiet and affordable and very capable for 1080p gaming. It doesn't offer anything more than just the basics, but for most gamers on a budget, that's more than enough. Now, Nvidia officially does not support to SLI them, but DirectX 12 multi-GPU usage will be very interesting to try it out. Now, if you need some more power, you can check out Martin's build with the Sotec GTX 1070, which is huge. Also, currently I'm mining Ubicoins on the 1050s and they have an okay hash rate of around 13 megahash per second for each card, which is really okay. So let's see how they keep up against Martin's build with the 1070 Extreme. I'm already excited. Something I really liked is that the MSI X360 Gaming Titanium motherboard comes with the Aura lighting control software. That means you can control the lighting of your LED strips in your PC and you can also opt to have all zones to be in sync, which is really cool. Now BitPhoenix provides some LED strips, but basically you could even use some cheap Amazon LED strips. This should work fine as they have the same connector. Now something that's really special about this case are the dual tempered glass walls. Now they spread the LED light and it looks simply amazing. Very beautiful. Seriously, this is one of the most beautiful and simple cases I've seen. I just wish that the front panel and buttons and the overall plastic quality would be a bit better. The case is fully modular, that means you can take out all the unneeded stuff and also have a lot of space for the water cooling. This was a good thing, because the huge 280 Be Quiet cooler needed some extra space. Now also cable management is easy with the case. You can hide all the cables on the back, or you can also find another LED strip connector box. And you can decide to hook the LED light directly to your motherboard, or use the case connector or just use both like I do, which allows you to change the color with the button on the case. Now I didn't buy any optical drive because I really think this is not needed anymore in 2017. There is all I need on the motherboard. By the way, the motherboard is sick and I can't wait to film the overclocking guide because this board offers a lot of great OC features too. Well that's my build, if you want to see Martin's build then head over to TechAlta and check it out.
Alright guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and it's already again 1am in the morning and the last few days I've been living off coffee and I get really coffee addicted and no sleep, but anyway, I've been using this computer now for the last week and I have to say it was really a great idea to wait for the new Ryzen to come out, especially the 1800X. If I compare video editing, and this video what you see here has been edited on the new system, if I compare this with my gaming notebook, with the GTX 1070 and i7, it's almost maxed out, it's so much smoother on the rise and it's just sick. I can play back the whole project in, in real time and there is no single lag, even though I just have the 1050s inside. So talking about the 1050s, I also need to swap the GPUs and Probably I will buy an M.2 SSD or maybe two because that sick motherboard has two slots and that will give me a huge boost for video editing. Regarding RAM, well, um, 16 gigabytes. Now most people say get 32, blah, 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 but usually I don't even use the 16 gigs um, in Adobe. So probably there is a small, tiny boost with 32 gigs. Let's see. Also stay tuned for some more videos, we'll have overclocking, I just need to um, fix my air condition, you can probably hear all the fans, I'm also um, mining some crypto coins here and the rig right over here produces a lot of heat, so there will be a Bitcoin mining tutorial also to see um, what those GPUs can do, DirectX 12, overclocking on the GPUs and also overclocking the new Ryzen CPU to see what you can get out of it and what you can expect. So I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video in collaboration with Martin from TechAltar. You can find his build down below in the description or up here, so make sure you check out his channel because he produces really great videos. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I now need some sleep and yeah, I get finally recovered for the next videos. So I really hope that I see you again in the next video and now have a nice day and good night.